There we go. So again, just as a reminder, if you have a question, you're welcome to type it in the chat box. You're welcome to just unmute and ask whatever works for you works for me. But let me come back to sit here. So you're welcome to start class sitting. Maybe you're on a prop, maybe you're not. Maybe you're laying instead if you want to just lay down comfortably, if you feel like popping into a child's pose, whatever it is that is kind of calling you, I would suggest go there. <laughs> and once we get situated, we'll let ourselves close our eyes and kind of wiggle and shift our body into stillness, whatever that might look like for you right now, whatever that feels like. You can close the eyes entirely or just let the gaze be soft, not looking at anything specific. And just come to arrive into the body. Taking a few conscious breaths here, noticing your inhales, noticing your exhales. We now might notice the gaze at the backs of the eyelids. Continuing to draw our senses inwards, noticing this internal space. And just arriving into this sense of self, somewhat simple, somewhat complex. We may not know all of the details of the intricacies of our body's functions, but we do know the way that this particular practice makes us feel or what this practice allows us to think about, allows us to explore upon. And in our yin practice, we kind of have this mindset of the world is the oy our oyster. Is that the phrase? The world is our oyster. Limitless possibility as we allow ourselves to arrive into our limitless potential. Allowing our body to lead and the mind to follow especially because most of our days and activities, it is the mind leading and the body following. And so as we help to balance out the body with the shift of these roles, welcoming layers and aspects of comfort and layers and aspects of discomfort, arriving into our sense of self for practice. And so with this in mind, we'll come to take a few breaths together. Let's inhale through the nose and open the lips to exhale. Again, like that, deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Again, like that, full inhale. And a full exhale. And as you come back to the natural breath, we'll come to take one more cleansing breath or joining me for the sound of Om. Your hands might stay relaxed within the lap. Your hands might come to the heart and belly. Your hands might come into prayer at heart center. Whatever it is that you choose to do, again, body leading, mind following. And together, we'll take a final inhale. Oh. And very gently bowing the chin towards the chest. I'm taking a moment to allow your breath and the vibrations to settle within the heart space. 
and to reverberate off the walls of the inner body and to seal our intentions for practice. Whenever you're ready, you can slowly open the eyes. You can bring the hands away. Welcoming ourselves here, I'm gonna have us start in a double stretch. So, and we've done this before too, but let me just explain. Usually as we take our one yin pose, we then come into our pause of rebound and then go into the next, et cetera, et cetera. But the way we'll start practice today is a stretch, a stretch, and then taking our mindful meditative pause of rebound. So just so you know, that's where we're going. We'll start in a forward fold. So I'm gonna turn my body to the side. The left leg will come out straight in front of us and the right foot is going to rest within the inner thigh, knee opens out to the side. Okay, so our half butterfly. Now, because this is our fold, we might take our blocks, our books, our blankets, our whatever we're using, and we're gonna support ourselves in the fold of the stretch. You might take a blanket, prop your tailbone, if that assists your pelvis or your spine. Remember, you can keep your props as close as you'd like, and maybe you sit tall. This is still yin. If you eventually have more space and you choose to round and go a little deeper, Again, you're still in another yin variation. So you're welcome to find the best threshold to begin, depending on what you need in the, in the hamstring, in the hip, in your shoulders. So this will be our first pose. The second part, part of this is to come into dove. And if you know dove, then you're already thinking of it, but I'll explain it later on. Just, as so, just so you know, this is where we'll start. You might stack your hands one on top of the other. You might have your hands hold your forehead. You can use your arms as a prop here as well if you'd like. But as you're shifting around within the body, shifting around your props, I'll start our timer. And then we'll close the eyes. And we'll settle into stillness not rushing to the deepest stretch the quickest, allowing the body to lead and the mind to follow. It doesn't mean the mind can't have input. <laughs> the mind might offer you a suggestion or two but let's just make sure that we're following the sensations that we feel within the body as well. And as we're settling here, maybe taking a cleansing breath or two Allow the body to continuously adapt to the stillness. Beginning to soften. If you notice any clenching in the eyes and the face, letting those areas relax. And releasing through the jaw and the tongue, soften through the lips. Even just a gentle release through the sides of the neck, shoulders softening. And relaxing deeply into the chest, to the heart space. All throughout the diaphragm, the rib cage. Releasing through the abdomen. And as we relax through the muscles of the glutes, that will assist the legs and quads to soften. The backs of the knees to breathe. And as we release any clenching in the muscles of the calves all the way down into the soles of the feet.
You might soften like this a few more times. Letting go of any unnecessary tension or clenching that you feel. We'll be in this forward fold for a few more breaths. Maybe taking one more full breath here. And then when you're ready, we'll gently press down into our props and we'll slowly lift up the head and chest. Now, most of the time, our dynamics here are to bring us into rebound, but we'll stay a little more focused. We'll move those props off to the side because we're going to come into a double stretch. So, this is going to Continue that flow of fascia. Move those props off to the side. We'll let the body come back to lay down. Right side for dove. That right knee again, op again opens out to the side here, but that left knee is bending and the foot comes flat to the floor. At this point, your right foot can stay out as wide as you'd like it to, or it will walk underneath the left thigh changing the direction that your knee is pointing in. If you need a prop underneath your thigh, back of the head, if you need a prop underneath your hips, right? Gra gather those pillows and blankets, whatever you might be using. Transitioning right into dove. So we're not leaving that meditative space just yet. Arms relaxing near you, away from you, up above the head. And again, we soften. Allowing your awareness to float throughout the body. Softening and relaxing into any pockets of tissue. Breathing into those layers of comfort as we feel the body relax. And while also honoring the layers of discomfort, anything that might be challenging because of the stretch, because of the stillness.
And staying present here. We're going to hang out in Dove for a few more breaths. Continuing observing the body, witnessing the body here. And then whenever you're ready, we'll gently begin to lower the arms down by the hips and thighs. The right hand is going to reach for that outer right knee as we gently hug the knee into the chest. Now, no particular stretch to go into, so we're going to move even slower. Feeling the release of the fascia here, you might hug your left knee into your chest as well and maybe rock gently side to side. No particular movements, but if there is a counter movement you'd like to come into, the knees hugging into the chest, legs stretching up to the ceiling maybe, legs can dangle as you roll into your ankles. If there's a particular movement to the hips, your hips might lift up, your arms might move. And all of these counter stretches are taking you into that pause of rebound, body leading, mind following. This rebound portion of, you know, a mini Shavasana. Allowing the subtle sensations from both previous poses, echoing off the walls of the body. Breathing into all of the avenues and channels of our layers to muscle and bone. Pausing here to feel that internal experience. And if you'd like to stay in rebound a little bit longer, you're more than welcome to do so. If you're interested in coming back to that forward fold, then we'll begin to awaken. You might move your arms and legs in any way to help you come up to sit, but no rush. Sometimes after our rebound, the body is also calling for a counter movement. The way we might stretch, the way we might lean, whatever it is. But then we're going to prepare ourselves for the opposite side of that forward fold. So as the right leg lengthens. Now it's this left knee that bends in. Again, you might prop your tailbone with a pillow or a blanket. We'll stack our props, right? Maybe you're not using any blocks or books, so you can just leave your pillows upon your right leg, you know, as you lean. Maybe things are going to be a little bit more vertical or horizontal, but you know, you'll have to get it to stay. <laughs> which is doable once you play around with it. There you go. So deciding how much of a hinge, right, you'll start with, and you can always change your mind as we're here stretching. 
the body is giving us constant information, a constant influx of information. Nervous system is processing it. So no rush to stillness. You're never stuck in stillness. You're always welcome to change variations. But then when you're ready, we'll settle here. Let's allow the eyes to soften, body finding stillness. You might be intrigued and interested in where the fascia is stretching, where the body is showing this length of tissue. There's no right or wrong place to stretch. Even though our body is mostly physically still, there is still a lot of action taking place. Within this sense of self, we are observing, we are witnessing the body ready to help at a moment's notice. We are choosing, we are taking action to soften to let go of any clenching, of any gripping. We are choosing, taking action and being patient as these knots of tissue detangle from themselves. And so we'll hang out here in our forward fold for a few more breaths. And when you're ready here, we'll gently press down into our props, slowly lifting the head and chest, no rush. Even if your body's calling for a movement here, sometimes it'll feel good to just stretch your arms up. But knowing we're not settling into that reverberation of rebound, we'll gently move our props off to the side. We might move things behind us, around us. Our intention here is to patiently come back to lie down, moving into the next stretch, coming right into dove where our 
right knee bends, foot flat to the floor, left knee opens out to the side, very similar to what it just did. But now this left foot has the opportunity to walk underneath the space of the right leg in any amount to deepen or lessen a stretch, to drive the stretch in a particular quadrant of the leg. Hands resting, arms relaxing in any way, in any shape. And then again, we soften right into the stillness. Again, challenging our edge as we take action, our action to soften, taking action to release physically and energetically within the stretch. Continuing to arrive into the sense of self. The sense of being that you might feel within the breath. That you might get a glimpse of as you notice the gaze at the backs of the eyelids. And just staring forward at the backs of the eyelids, noticing those shades of darkness, lightness, any sort of smoothness or texture. We'll be here in Dove for a few more breaths. And then whenever you're ready, very slowly, our arms will begin to awaken. They'll reach down for the outer hips. Left knee slowly hugs into the chest, knowing that there's no particular place to go. Maybe the right knee hugs in as well and rock gently side to side, coming into any counter movements, the Lengthening of the legs, the lengthening of the arms, maybe moving through the hands and feet. 
whatever it is, you can take as many counter movements as you'd like until you settle into that space to rebound where we bask within all of this shift, where we bask within the breath, within the energy of the body, noticing these subtle sensations as the tissue contracts back. This meditative pause, finding the, or feeling the imprint from the previous stretches. Absorbing into the nervous system, into the muscle memory of the body. If you'd like to stay here a little bit longer, you're more than welcome to. But if you're interested in transitioning into the next stretch, well, we might take a few movements, maybe a windshield wipering of the knees or something along those lines as we awaken. And we're gonna come into our open wing stretch. So this is gonna guide us to the belly. No rush to get there. And we might bring a pillow underneath or, you know, at least near the face or for the forehead. So let me switch sides here. Take your time getting onto the belly, no rush. We're gonna start with open wing on the left side. So once you come to lay down, you might even scooch to the right side of your mat and then you'll open your left arm out to a T, just out to the side. So I'm gonna bring my left arm over here out to the side, okay? Take that pillow, rolling into the shoulder, right? So I'm gonna move on my side of my chest, on my hips. And as that left arm is behind me, my right arm is in front just to help with balance as the knees hug into the chest. That left arm that's behind you can face up or down depending on what is good for you. And as your knees hug into the chest, this might be good. If you want more stretch, you might straighten your legs. If you want even more than that, you'll bend into that right knee and bring your foot flat to the floor like a kickstand. Yeah, and then the foot can stay here. The foot might walk in front of the leg, just doing what's best for your hip. Right arm might stay in front of you or it might bind behind the back. I'm just doing what's best for you. But then I'll just show it from the opposite side just to make sure that it's clear. Woo. But once your left arm is out to T, so you just bring it out horizontally and then you roll into the shoulder, right? So that left arm is behind you out in like one long, horizontal line. Maybe it's a little bit higher, maybe it's a little bit lower, right? So it's not gonna be completely perfect, but at least it's behind you and the palm can face up or down depending on what you need. So if you have questions, let me know. Everybody looks good. So I'll start our timer. The head is welcome to rest on the floor. If not, maybe it's propped, but as long as it's not hovering in the air. Now allowing our awareness to focus on these sensations of stretch in the upper body.
You might still feel subtle sensations through the back and the hips and in other areas of the lower body. That's absolutely fine. But this main focal point is, well, if we have the shoulder rotate like this, what occurs for the body? If we have the legs rest over here, then where does that gently tug the tissue that is connected in one piece, this web of connection in one piece? And as we allow the body to lead and show us where we're holding the most unnecessary tension, again, we get to take that action to soften. If you notice any clenching or gripping through your muscles, just soften gracefully when your body is ready. Noticing any shifts within the breath. And as we allow our entire nervous system to receive this reset, we mindfully observe and witness. Maybe taking one more full breath exactly here. And then as we keep that left arm still, if the right arm is behind us, we'll slowly lift it up and bring it back in front. Taking your legs one on top of the other, we'll slowly roll out of the shoulder, take your time and roll onto the belly. From there, your hands and arms can relax wherever you'd like. You might lift up the chest and belly to readjust. Noticing the subtle sensations through the side of the body. If it and feels good, you can bend into your knees, kick up your feet, and windshield wiper the legs from side to side. Only if that calls to you. And when you're ready, you can relax the legs. You might be hovering here in rebound right on the belly. If you want to press your palms underneath your shoulders, lift all the way up and back for child's pose. 
maybe roll to your side body, do whatever it is that will feel most nourishing, most supportive. And sometimes the intensity of the stretch can feel like when we're slowly ripping off a Band-Aid and it's that pinch to the skin. Our rebound here is that hug of the body, that hug to the body. If you'd like to stay here a little bit longer, you're more than welcome to stay. If you're interested in coming into open wing on the opposite side, we'll gently come back to the belly. Maybe find that pillow or blanket, whatever you're using to prop the head and we'll bring the opposite arm out to T. Okay, so if you ended up starting with your right, you know, now you'll do the left, but for everyone else, we're gonna to come to the right side. Right arm opens out to T, and as you roll into that shoulder, the arm is behind you now. Propping the side of the ear, taking any variation for your legs at any point in time. Left hand resting in front of you or binding behind the back. You might even end up finding your own variation as the body leads you here in a particular placement. Whenever you're ready, we'll find stillness. Allowing the sensations to speak for themselves. The mind is one helpful guide, but it is not the only perspective. We may all have a particular place within the body that we feel chronic tightness. Sometimes we think stretching in that particular area is going to solve that issue, and it does not. Imagining that fishing net, imagining that spider web, everything, each fiber is connected. No particular beginning, no particular end. And the tightness all the way into our feet can affect the shoulders. The tightness all the way at the crown of the head can affect our calves.
just knowing that the entire body, wherever you are stretching, is beneficial. The release of unnecessary tension, unnecessary control, or any holds in any particular joint, muscle, organ. And as we take one more full cycle of breath here, with the stillness of that right arm, we'll guide the left palm in front of us just to support. Guiding one leg on top of the other, we'll begin this transition out of the stretch onto the belly. Very slow, no rush. Noticing any cleansing breaths. You might readjust your arms and let them relax. Let them lay out wherever they land. And if the body is calling for that windshield wipering or that rocking of the hips, of course, take that gentle movement. If the body is calling for that child's pose, that cat cow, the down dog, whatever it might be, just follow that, whatever appeals to you here. Maybe you're perfectly content exactly where you are and you'll take those movements later. Noticing this limitless potential to be guided and supported. Noticing any subtle sensations. There's movement to the body and the inner body anyway. I'm taking another breath here. And if you'd like to stay a little bit longer, you're more than welcome to do so. If you're ready for our next stretch, we are going to come into a recline twist. So even if you're not in child's pose yet and you wanna come into it, feel free. We'll all gently awaken from rebound with any counter movements, even from that stillness. Whatever feels good to the body or the breath, that reclaimed space of the tissue, it's gonna to wanna to be utilized, right? So some movements will feel good. But we will come back to lay down so that we can talk about our twist. So maybe some pillows or blankets nearby. A few different options here that we're gonna come into. So option one is always supine twist. We're gonna twist to the right first though so that the left leg is on top, right? Supine. 
Of course, you can prop the head, you can prop the inner knees, you can prop that bottom leg, whatever it is that is best for you in terms of supine. That's option one. Option two is we're gonna straighten that bottom right leg. So as that bottom leg, length, leg lengthens, will allow this left knee to continue to twist over the body. It might not touch the floor, it doesn't have to, but of course you can take a blanket, a pillow, and prop the area of the knee, the calf, the ankle. From there, as we wiggle on our shoulders, get them in the best placement, arms can come into cactus or open out into a T-shape. Sometimes they'll rest lower to the body as well. Okay, but option one will be supine. We're supining to the right. And then option two to take that further, drop that right leg. Left knee continues to twist over the body, but right leg will go long. Depending on how your spine or shoulders feel today, you might rest on your right side. Your right arm can be a pillow for the head. But if you're choosing to deepen that twist, then yes, the left shoulder can reach towards the floor. It may or may not touch. And so just find what works best for you, no right or wrong. Settling here. and softening whenever you're ready. Checking in on the breath from time to time. Noticing the place that we hover in, this in-between space of comfort and discomfort. Some poses will lean into more comfortable side of things. Other poses will lean into more of the uncomfortable. So we're always teeter-tottering in between this edge. We'll be here for a few more moments.
whenever you're ready. Let's gently begin to awaken the arms and the legs. No rush to this as we start to roll onto our backs. Sometimes a good counter movement is coming up into a bridge pose, even just the pressure of the feet, right, to engage as we lift the hips and extend the spine. It might not be that though. It might be a windshield wipering. We might hug the knees into the chest. Arms can stretch up above the head or wrap around our chest. And you'll find that place to settle, that mini shavasana of rebound. I'm feeling the imprint of the previous pose, creating this new mold for the body. Right, this new structure. And the mind knows that we've completed the stretch, that we're out of the pose, but it's not done for the body. And the cells continuously work to coexist with this new form of tissue, the way it is laying now. Which is essentially what muscle memory is. There's plastic plasticity in the brain, yes, but also within the body. And if you'd like to stay here a little bit longer, you're more than welcome to. If you're choosing to awaken from rebound and come into the twist on the opposite side, then we might take a few little movements to get ourselves ready. No rush at all. But we'll now twist to the left with the right leg on top. And if you're choosing to supine, if that's the best stretch for you today, leaving one leg on top of the other, or as the right knee twists over the body, left leg lengthens. Any props for the knees, the hips, the shoulders, whatever it might be. Whether you choose to stay primarily on your left side for more of a supportive stretch, or you'll let your right arm reach out to the side and your shoulder blade reaches to the floor. Ensure your chin and neck have relaxed in any direction, whatever is best for them. Beginning to arrive here.
Checking in on the breath from time to time. And the body might feel relaxed, but there is still this opportunity to soften and become more receptive. And so we'll be here for a few more breaths. And then very gently, let's begin to slowly unravel from our twist. There's no race, no rush at all. Legs move one at a time. Arms move one at a time. Your body might guide you straight into rebound. You might take a few counter movements beforehand. Just let the body lead. Noticing the subtle sensations, any shifts within the breath. Maybe this sense of closeness or connection, we've reminded ourselves that exists. And so and as you take another breath here and rebound, part of me wants to just bring us into Shavasana, but the other part of me wants to do toe stretch. <laughs> so we will come up for toe stretch. We don't do it for that long. So let's just gather some of our energy, maybe hug the knees into the chest. We'll roll to one side of the body and gently come up to sit. This will be our final shape, though. Then we'll come down to take Shavasana, but we'll at least do our toes, our feet. So as we walk ourselves into tabletop, right, we're going to tuck our toes into the mat. Right. So sometimes your hands will reach back and help the pinky toes there. And as you sit on the heels, that is more of an intense stretch as we sit back, but you can use your blocks or any pillows and blankets and lean forward a little bit. 
you might even just use the floor, even if you don't want to use blocks, because coming forward is more, or I'm sorry, coming forward is less and sitting back is more. In the event that that's gonna be too much sensation too quick tonight, you're gonna take one foot at a time, right? You'll lean into your right foot and then you'll alternate and lean back into your left foot. So you'll kind of find this rocking. So feel free to choose whatever variation is best for you, but we're all gonna come into something in terms of our toe stretch. And then we'll settle here. putting all of our skills to the test. Rather than clenching and disconnecting, allowing the body to lead you. And letting the breath breathe in any cadence, at any rhythm, at any tone. Upper body softening, it assists the lower body. Just a few more breaths here. Whenever you're ready, let's start to hinge the body forward. Our palms will come down and we'll all meet in tabletop as we untuck one foot at a time. You might drum the tops of the feet on the floor. You might shake the feet or, you know, roll your ankles and such. We will feel our feet rebound as we come to sit down and we'll prepare for our final rebound of practice, which is Shavasana. So if there are any pillows or blankets that you'd like to use, you might gather them so that you become comfortable. Maybe it's no props at all. Laying on your back, laying on your belly, laying on your side body, whatever it is that you need. Our time in Shavasana gives us opportunity to absorb our practice. Feeling that imprint from our entire time here. And as we rest quietly within the space of the self, we'll welcome ourselves to Shavasana.
very gently. Let's begin to deepen the breath. Noticing your inhales and exhales here. As we feel the way the body has relaxed and settled. Notice the placement of the hands and feet. And we begin to offer some gentle movement, the rolling of the wrists and ankles, the wiggle to the fingers and toes. If it appeals to you, stretch the arms up and above the head. Arms can lengthen here. As the knees bend and the feet come flat to the floor, we might windshield wiper the knees. We might hug the knees into the chest once more. Then when you're ready, we'll gently roll either to the right or to the left. Bottom arm can rest as a pillow for the head here. Feel the release of the back as we pause. You can stay here and then practice if you want, or we'll gently press down into the floor and walk up to sit. Closing however you'd like in any particular shape. As we settle for one more moment of reflection, noticing the reclaimed space within the body, the expansion within the breath, and the clarity here within the heart and mind. Hands can stay relaxed within the lap or they can gather into prayer. We'll close with one cleansing breath or sound of Om. But together, let's breathe in. Oh. And gently bowing the chin to the chest. Thank you for practicing with me this evening, being elevated through yoga. Namaste.